Chauvy Grotto still shines the first light of humanity we can touch. Let's return to this source, a revelation that awakened our souls 35,000 years ago. Art from heaven is on display. The seed of divine truth was planted here. I am Sir Knight Daryl Brees, fluids engineer, scripture scholar, and expert on metaphysics. Unveiling these painted visions will enlighten you. Picture dreams that began our traditional stories, traditional stories that eventually became the written word. Indeed, Chauvy laid the first cornerstone for civilization and today is the keystone for peace. Ancient dreams of our spiritual world still connected by the rainbow. Let's return to our source and relive these dreams long forgotten. Chauvy Cave at Ponte Arc or Rainbow Bridge is on the Ardèche River just 50 miles up from the Mediterranean Sea and may be the most sacred site on earth. The United Nations assumed authority of this cave from the French government in 2011, making it a UNESCO World Cultural Heritage Site. Indeed, called our greatest treasure, its value surpasses the pyramids, the Acropolis, the Dead Sea Scrolls, Machu Picchu, and the Parthenon for good reason. They all began in Chauvy, our first religious relic. After discovery in late 1994, Chauvy was locked down immediately to prevent another Lasso-like invasion of human contamination. Much of Chauvy's art was shown in Werner Herzog's Cave of Forgotten Dreams movie documentary from 2011. Chauvy's Sacred Heart of the Cross and Sacristy Chamber were left out, but here you will see why. Movie viewers and scientists who explored the cave have reported visions and lucid dreams. Like Lasso, a replica cave is being built some two and a half miles away to handle the 300,000 pilgrims who will flock to it yearly. Named the return to Chauvy Ponte Arc, it will not be able to handle everyone who wants to see it. So a traveling exhibit will also be employed this is the ancient common source for subsequent philosophy, religion, science, and culture. It is what scientist Stephen Barr explained in his book, Modern Physics and Ancient Faith, as Chauvy intimately unites the science of our physical and metaphysical world. A hundred years ago, Einstein announced the theory of relativity, knowing that all the spiritual and massive dimensions must harmonize. The universal laws of physics and mathematics told him that. Albert called our creator the Old One, with good reason. His theories pointed back to a singularity, a created start for our world. He had intuitive knowledge of divine design, and the primer is found here in Chauvy, our key to eternal life. The symbolic magic of Chauvy was first identified by French-Canadian Gerald Doust, an expert on cherubim. Gerald was enlightened by the Ascension Dream in 1981, riding a winged horse through the heavens. We know being touched by an angel comes with an obligation to share the good news. Gerald and I co-authored God's Steed, Key to World Peace, the made reference for these simple translations. To the casual observer, Chauvy's art causes wonder, lighting up the soul. These graphics use symbolic imagery from nature. Over 400 animals are depicted celebrating life. Temple ceremonies were cultured by a combination of sacrifice, mind-altering organics, music, dance, and a resounding oratory. Excuse me. <clears throat> The goal was to open up the spiritual dimensions and answer the age-old questions. This shaman painter illuminated humanity, telling us the purpose of life. 
Was this ascended master the first man? Chauvet's art has a few human forms, a panel of red dots from palm prints, which may have counted members, a half-human bull, centaur, sun god, sorcerer, and the first classic Venus. A few horse skeletons were found, probably from sacrifices. Horses are celebrated throughout Chauvet, and three were clearly painted as angelic. 25,000 years later, the sacrifice of the horse ceremony continued and was called Abhameda in the religion of Indra. Considered the most solemn of rituals, the indignation of the sacred horse is said to yield the gift of prophecy, which here means opening up a channel to heaven's divine knowledge. In later temple grand openings, horses, lambs, cattle, goats would be slaughtered in thankful celebration to life. Abraham offered to sacrifice his son Isaac. Ancient American, Inca, Mayan, and many other cultures made human sacrifices. Even Jesus chose to sacrifice himself as the Lamb of God. Today, prayer and sacrifice still help prepare the soul to better understand Scripture. We know that people drank Soma during subsequent horse sacrifice rituals to promote vigor, spiritual fertility, and immortality. This very hormonal recipe stimulated the penal gland in the brain and was popular with Celts and Nordic Scandinavians. Our brain's penal gland is considered a channel for visions. It is also the highest of the seven chakras. The sacred horse, cherubim, were painted center stage in Chauvi, our first temple of understanding. Why did this shaman record the winged horse? Well, like many holy people, he was enlightened in the lucid ascension dream, riding Pegasus through the heavens. Daylight visions of this angelic horse also dapple scripture. Horse feathers? <laughs> you bet your life. Here are a, a few more metaphysical building blocks, so bear with us. Let me explain this temporary, inferior, earthly dimension of mass that we live in. The spiritual heavens above do not have mass and traveling through them is easier than in our lower four dimensions. Compare a bird flying through the sky versus being mired in mud. The Chauvet artist painted a complete story of liberated spiritual flight by incorporating flying insects and butterflies. The brilliant butterfly analogy is still used by Celts, Greeks, and American Indians today. When the body dies, you are liberated, transfiguring into a purely spiritual being, just like the butterfly metamorphosis, metamorphosis of going from cocoon to flight. And butterflies are seen in dreams of flight, many times with the winged horse. So why did our Creator make us a temporary mass? Where did we come from? Where are we going? How do we get there? The age-old questions. These four dimensions of mass we live in are temporary and inferior to the heavenly dimensions above. I spoke with Dr. Michael Duff in 2007. He chaired the theoretical physics lab at the University of Michigan and had Nobel laureates on staff. He believed the theory of everything is M-theory or 11-dimensional supergravity theory proposed by Edwin Witten in 1995. Yes, we live in four dimensions with mystical seven heavens above us, so four plus seven equals 11. Physics and metaphysics harmonize. M stands for the membranes which separate the seven heavenly dimensions. Scripture describes these membranes as the great sheet, the tent cloth, the canopy of heaven, among, among others. 
St. Paul writes in the Bible of the elite three highest heavens. Scripture and visionaries report that when cherubim move through these membranes, they spin like a wheel, opening up a portal. Anyway, I asked Dr. Duff if mass could exist in, in higher dimensions. He was not sure. However, Scripture does tell us flesh and blood is not allowed in heaven. No road apples. Remember, mass is temporary and inferior, so it's not allowed into heaven's bliss. Angels are considered slightly above us in dignity. Good thing we all have one. Like Elijah, the Lord, Muhammad, Vishnu. This angel really is a ride back to heaven. This perfect angelic spirit is put into us at conception. The holy books tell us that. Check yours. This Holy Spirit, this cherub, is a winged horse, our psychopomp, our soul's guide. Our consciousness, our body's manager, our soul, is where free will lies. The body, soul, and spirit are truly separate and distinct. Scripture tells us that. If we are good during the body's lifetime, the soul mystically fuses with our heavenly spirit, which can only accept goodness. Your soul is then enlightened, and it shows. Upon death, the spirit returns to the creator who gave it, bringing the attached soul to heaven for eternity. The other possibility is, when the body dies after the spirit and soul have been misaligned in life, the perfect spirit still goes back to heaven without the soul. This lost soul then drifts in the lower dimensions forever, unless it can find another body to reincarnate into. Elisha witnessed Elijah's ascension, seeing this transfiguration in broad daylight. Chariot-like wheels with horses of fire. I saw a similar transfiguration at 104 Pacific Standard Time, January 3rd, 1994, and reported it to the church. Real angelic light, an obligation to share, and guess what? Chauvie gets discovered later that year on December 18th. Coincidence? The angelic horse pervades ancient, oriental, and Abrahamic religions. Scripture records them as cherubim, centaurs, and many other names. Imposing cherubim were posted at the east gate of Eden, preventing re-entry after Adam, Adam and Eve were banished. Were these the retracted spirits from Adam and Eve? Cherubim are recorded in every holy book. And all scripture says the divine horse will return carrying the Lord on Judgment Day. This angelic workhorse represents the Holy Spirit in creation, the post-flood recreation, and Judgment Day prophecy. Religions share one creator, centaurs, reincarnation, the Trinity, and Judgment Day. You may wonder about polytheism and one creator. Yes, in the great Hindu line from which all oriental religions descend, the Rig Veda clearly states that through all the apparent swarming polytheism of Hinduism, one unchanging tenet stands clear. God is one. All have the same Holy Spirit essence. Question about centaurs? Every religion has statues of them as they represent enlightenment. Centaurs are the symbolic represent representatives of our soul and spirit mystically joined. Prominent in ancient Egypt and still in the Vatican Museum today. Reincarnation in Christendom? Yes, the early church fathers of Christianity proclaimed themselves as a reincarnist faith, a truth later quashed by one papal opinion. But remember Galileo? The good news is that Vatican II said you do not have to be Catholic or even Christian to get to heaven. Let me explain. The angelic spirit that our Creator puts into us is Trinitarian in nature. 
And again, all religions share the Trinity. So that spark of the Creator, Holy Spirit, and Lord are in us, all known by whatever name is on the tablet of your heart, whether you recognize it or not. God is the unity of the Trinity, spiritually fused as one, all the same but distinct. God is without inferior mass, so the essences can occupy the same space and time. Got all that? We all share that Holy Spirit inside us, literally a spark of the Trinity. God's celestial steed is our cherub, too. Guardian angel? Yes. Here's Judgment Day in a bit more detail. This story is predicted in all the good books written with different names and a few different details. But the Judgment Day story is simple. The Lord mounts an angelic horse in heaven and comes to earth to judge. Whether this coming is the first for the Jews, second for the Christians, or tenth for the Hindus, it is simply the coming and everyone will see their Lord as best suited to their heart and mind. That's the way theophanies and divine wisdom work. Everyone is satiated. The Lord on the Holy Spirit horse sent by the Creator. The Trinity in action. Wow. Chauvy, the most sacred spot on earth. A visionary's magical art gallery which reflects the Rainbow Bridge Covenant. This arc spans history straight to our hearts today. Superior spiritual dimensions exist above this fourth dimension, and indeed God uses angels to help steer creation into the right path. God knows what will result from angelic adjustments. God knows and pre predestines what we will choose with our free will. God knows if we will get back to heaven. God sees our timeline all at once, like a mural. Seven angels were employed to unveil Chovy's visions, appearing to the Chovy shaman, French-Canadian Louis Joseph Papineau, Gerald Doust, me, uh, Cecilia, the book's editor, Taylor, my daughter, and Debbie, a witness. We know angels presage monumental events. They are intermediaries and messengers. Examples as in the birth of Confucius, or would an angelic unicorn save India by converting the barbarian Genghis Khan, or the angels on Mons during World War I in 1918 France that saved 65,000 British troops. And there's a, a, a similar story of that in the Bible. Many more angelic encounters are written with the magnificent cherubim as the most popular choice for taskmaster. Ancient artists used a combination of wings, birds, stars, sun, and firelight to depict angels. Chauvy's pegasi are shown white with good use of the limestone walls, and like Chauvy's metaphysical pig boar, one is drawn wingless. You can now understand Chauvy's graphic symbolism. We will unveil the five most important graphics, then follow this star through highlights of history. Let's start with the owl graphic drawn in the Hilaire chamber. He is shown asleep as most divine messages manifest in lucid dreams. The owl symbolizes flight, prophecy, and higher wisdom. These eyes of nocturnal vision were naturally associated with the god of dreams, Oniris. They are still painted on the bows of boats today. Goddess Athena was often seen with the owl, and she gifted Pegasus' wisdom and prophecy to the muses. The divine eye of Egyptian lore still tops the Masonic Pyramid and the Washington Monument, pointing the way to heaven. The Sacred Heart of the Cross in the original entry chamber is simple and prophetic, a prophecy which later became the foundational symbol of Christianity. It was painted 35,000 years ago to first predict the coming Messiah. 
later, Magians, Jews, Mithraic, Sarastor, and others also recorded this prophecy. The wall contours were selected specifically to enhance the three-dimensional depth of the graphic. The cross symbol explodes out of the heart of the earth and speaks volumes to transfiguration, love, and sacrifice. Scripture tells us Christ was crucified on a tree and dozens of cross symbols existed within 200 years after the crucifixion of Jesus. But this simple, specific cross eventually became the most popular. Many other religions have a similar story. The Norse god Odin also sacrificed himself to himself by crucifixion, laying on the great ash tree, Yggdrasil, upside down for nine days. This tree and other trees of life in scripture are considered synonymous with the winged horse. Odin's great cosmic tree was also called the Steed of Odin. Every religion has a tree of life. Back to the large pillar chamber for our next graphic. Remember the prophetic shaman had finger puttied the owl here. That tells us he received his prophetic visions in the ascension dream. Just like Gerald, myself, and countless others down through history. So he paints his visions, stories that will become scripture. The star of this magical mural is a winged horse who can symbolize the spiritual bodies of God or man, but here as the creator in this Genesis of the World mural. Six meters wide, the first story of creation, and a good one. The divine equine leads this simple celebration parade. Note first this horse cherub's front hoof, which is artfully tapered for emphasis. The steed is shown striking a three-dimensional mountaintop, which is set subtly in the foreground, gushing forth a symbolic waterfall of inspired life, being, and creation. 28,000 years later, the same story of life from mud is Bible scripture, as Adam, the first man, was made from earth's clay. In Greco-Roman lore, the specific details are identical, as Pegasus was credited with using his front hooves to strike the ground of the earth and generate the fountain of the muses, inspiring the root of all creativity. This record of mythology is from Eric Newman's book, Origins and Consciousness. Now we know this myth was based on fact, tangible, relic-based fact. It is amazing how this little hoofstrike story remained unchanged through history. Our creator steed multitasks, urinating a white cloud of life-sustaining water, which, if you look closely, is already producing lightning sparks to the left side, onto the earth below. Scientists today speculate a combination of lightning, water, and amino acids may have sparked life. Looks like they were right. The Greek creator Zeus, Thor, and other gods were also associated with lightning. Ancient Egyptians believed life came from water. Looking right, vertical streams of Soma are seeding or specifically inseminating the earth. These lines clearly point back to the steed's most mailed parts. This horse of the creator resembles the ancient tarpon wild horse. Were Chauvet's horse skeletons tarpons? This horse angel of the Lord demonstrates effort and wide-eyed determination. His head is lowered and wings swept back in definite work mode. The thick Ice Age mane crests and possibly falls to the far side of the neck allowing full view of that stylized wing. The spiritual wing represents enlightenment, symbolized later by the flowing Greco-Roman shlamish, a cloak or mantle. The divine horse is known by many names, throne, magic carpet, paraclete, unicorn, chariot, barak, seraphim, vishnu, winged disc, 
shamanic altaic drum, open and wheel, Holy Spirit, Kilin, Kirin, Tree of Life, and Key to Heaven. All good names. This inspired parade includes the mammoth white elephant, who still symbolizes the universal monarch in Hinduism and Buddhism today. Incredibly, the shaman drew a parade dress tassel that springs forward from the high point of this majestic beast's shoulders, indicating body adornment, possible domestication, and celebration. His flowing perimeter outlines were drawn to indicate his movement in this parade. Very impressive. The huge snooted pig boar is colored white to indicate its angelic nature. It stands confronting the parade. It has dual symbolism, known today in the Occidental world as the adversary, devil, sloth of the earth. It is ready to tempt, but Oriental religions embrace it as it promotes luck, prosperity, and fertility. Insightful, very insightful. There is another mammoth in the background between the horse and pig, showing life already spreading out. All this overlooks Chauvy's only sinkhole, which later symbolizes death, the afterlife, Hades, and may have been used here for ceremonial burials. There were no human bones in Chauvy. Our first creation story, and a good one, incredible common ground from the dawn of humanity. Let's now explore the end chamber in Chauvy, which science is called the Holy of Holies. This dominant off-the-arc mural is a nine-meter-long display of animals parading from an arc-like hatch. Herbivore woolly rhinoceros is following lions. The near-vertical pitch-black mark to the right of the niche is scraped on with a torch and represents a slightly angled opening in the arc. The arc was later recorded in Genesis 6.11 and 6.16 as having been sealed with petroleum-based pitch inside and out. The unnatural procession of herbivores and carnivores all seem mesmerized, probably preoccupied with their assigned duties to repopulate the earth, but weeks living in the stifling air of the zoo-like ark might have contributed. The balance of fauna life, as recorded in Genesis 8.19, is represented by insect art forms completing the biggest do-over in history. Magical Chauvy overlooks the Ponte Arc or Rainbow Bridge, which still symbolizes the way to heaven and tree of life to the Norse. We know God pledges a rainbow covenant in Genesis 9.13 to never again flood the earth. Was Ponte Arc this symbolic rainbow? There are many flood stories in history, with the two major epics of Gilgamesh and Noah being basically identical. After the flood, Noah was told to go forth, multiply, and cover the earth. God did not say to leave out southern France. Noah also planted a vineyard as recorded in Genesis 9.20. We see beautiful French vineyards today outside Chauvy Grotto. Was Noah the first to drink French wine? Chauvy's painters may have rode the ark or simply recorded prophetic visions. The Bible tells us the stories of creation and flood were known by the first seven generations of humans. Adam and Noah were reported to be alive just 50 years apart. The star of this first flood story is our busy horse cherub, symbolizing the angel of the Lord. One of our first composite narratives, the horse here as recreator, is appropriately uh, centered in the chapel-like niche, brilliantly drawn with its spiritual and embodied nature overlapping. The shaman artist chose this niche for its twin peaks, symbolic of the mountains reported in the Gilgamesh and Noah flood epics. And looking closely, we see the niche also anatomically resembles a heart. Scripture tells us our spirit lives there. Daniel 4.18 The tablet of our heart is also recorded in the Old Testament Proverbs 3.3 3 and 7.3. 3. 
The spiritual angelic white horse in the background was made by scraping the white limestone wall. Its eye is watching as its embodiment performs the divine task of pumping the spirit and soul of life back into the earth, holy essence from the Creator's body to give us one more chance. The red okra painted below symbolizes life and blood as the earth is being revitalized. Genesis 9.4 The Quran speaks of man created from a blood clot. The neatly drawn umbilical cord from the horse's heart has many names in various religions. Zoroaster calls it Kursky, and the Old Testament Ecclesiastics 12.6 Six, name it the Silver Cord. It is written that grateful Noah built an altar and made sacrifices to the Lord. There is a small altar in Chauvet which may have been pried from the ceiling or even divinely fell into place. Were the horse skeletons in Chauvet remains from sacrifices to give thanks or possibly promote prophecy? Maybe both. Looking to the right foreground of the off-the-ark mural, we see a painted stalactite. This displays a composite creature whose upper left side is a lioness and upper right is a bull, both sharing the Venus lower torso. This clearly shows how procreation works. The hanging stalactite was chosen as it clearly reinforces the theme's penal nature. This first Venus would be copied in statue and art down through history. Ancient man sculpted many handheld Venus figurines. Celebrating life is serious business. The sexual act rewards us with ecstasy, vibrational orgasm, which tunes us, very similar to mantras and song. This bull is shown creating life and symbolized male sexual vigor to ancient man. The bull would later be the sun god in many cultures, including the great Egyptian line and into early Judaism. The sun was given thanks and glory as our most prevalent daily gift. Today we still give thanks for a warm sunny day. Bull idolatry was eventually stopped short by Moses after his first trip up Mount Sinai. This Venus's vulva has an etched in vertical line which might have been added later. This first Venus may have been the best. The bull minotaur of Greek legend was eventually assigned to lord over the outer rings of Hades, and amazingly his spirit of the underworld still shows up in visions today. The sacristy chamber has a very narrow access from the end chamber. The sacred horse is painted here with a symbolic horn shown impaling the instinctual lion, our soul's symbolic representative. French experts identified the horse and feline, not quite as clear as other Chauvet art, but this exact scene and lore live on today. The lion and the unicorn are rivals. They are the Tao, the Way, a harmonious yet struggling intertwined union which symbolizes the freedom of choice in life. The ongoing turmoil of our perfect spirit contending with the imperfect human soul. This is the path we must endure to get to heaven. We live this story every day. You know its validity in your heart. This story is emblazoned on my sword's hilt, along with more unicorns and fleur de lay, symbol of the Trinity, made in holy Toledo, Spain. The Lord is often depicted riding the unicorn which points the way. The Pennsylvania Dutch have a double unicorn and tree of life hex signs to promote peace and harmony. Interestingly, this unicorn allegory was banned by the Catholic Church in the 1800s, but now the magisterium might horn in on that. We have unveiled the spiritual world, this fine cherub, and the answers. You see, we are eternal spirits with temporary bodies. Your angelic mount is your ride back to heaven. Scripture tells us that. 
Simply choose to be good. Spread your wings and live enlightenment. On up. Scientific magazine from 1904. The article pictures a human skeleton next to a horse, citing the more advanced bone structure of the horse, specifically the limbs and herbivore jaw. In many ways, a more advanced mammal. Indeed, has the sentient horse ever started a war? Why are Super Bowl ads by Budweiser Beer so successful? Well, it's simple. They appeal to our heart's natural love of horses. Let's trace our peace-loving angelic herbivore from magical shall, shall we down through the highlights in history. Between Shoei's two artistic periods about 28,000 years ago, Neanderthal made a last stand at a fishing village near the Rock of Gibraltar in southern Spain. We shared lineage before diverging many years ago. Did Neanderthal and the mammoth succumb to the long-range weapons in the Cro-Magnon arsenal? We may have blended our DNA with, with Neanderthal as some had red hair, and one less vertebrae, like me. Interestingly, both may be resurrected with cloning. Wonder if they had the spirit in them? Yes, clone people too. 25,000 years ago, cave art slowly spread in the region of France and Spain. More temples to teach the growing population. Chauvy's palm print counting dots would develop into basic geometric shapes, then later numbers and language. The population expanded as temperatures rose. Humanity spread to the Americas just by walking. Avella, Pennsylvania, USA, was settled some 16,000 years ago. Moving stars in the sky began to form the Pegasus Square and Constellation, which Plotomy recorded later in 2nd century AD. We gave glory to the Creator's stars as they guided us. These signs are still intertwined with religion today, as in my church's choir lofts, stained glass. No surprise, as stars predicted the Messiah and guided Magian priests to Jesus. At some point, a rock slide sealed Chobi's opening. The So Cave, some 15,000 years ago, became the Sistine Chapel of the ancient world. Our star was there as a unicorn sun god, a horse body with the double horns of the bull sun god, a blend of wonderful symbols, two horns pointing the way, representing the enlightened, unified soul spirit. Boats now enable us to spread slowly throughout the Mediterranean to Africa, Northern Europe, and Asia Minor. Hunter-gatherers carried with them the traditional stories, augmented by art, jewelry, sculpture, and music. Flutes were made from hollow raptor wing bone. Wonkin Tonkin, the great Amerindian warlock, and his thunder horse lived in drum circles around 14,000 BC, encouraged by sweat lodges, ceremony, and nature psychedelics, which are still in use today. Altered states of consciousness to open up heaven's channel, much like transcendental meditation does today. The shamanic goal was still to ride their horse or animal spirit through the heavens. In 2006, Johns Hopkins University scientists in Baltimore, Maryland, proved the spiritual world exists. In 2011, New York physicist Kyle Kramer stated the Large Hadron Collider will find heaven. They could have just looked in Chauvet. By 10,000 BC, the volcanic island of legendary Atlantis had a fountain topping the city with winged horses that gave glory to the Creator. These thank thankful seafarers adopted the seahorse as their emblem, visible to all who traded with them, representing the Lord over the oceans, the Smurf, this myth birthed Neptune and Poseidon of Greco-Roman fame and his trident, which honored the Trinity. It also symbolized the three times of heaven's eternity. 
Anglos from Europe and Persia slowly began the eastward expansion through the Kuiper Pass to the Hindus River Valley, bringing with them answers to the soul's questions. They were now confident to go forth and multiply. Jovi's lore and art would be a foundation for Hinduism, which began some 3,000 years later. In 7,000 BC, Hindus Vishnu became the manifestation of the Supreme God for riding the horse of the Universal Monarch. We know who he was. 7,000 to 6,000 BC, the Archangels are recorded in Scripture as traveling on the horse of God. 5,000 BC, Ahura Mazda, the Supreme Mazdian of Persia, was also known as Verona in Italy, one of Vishnu's numerous avatars. He flew the winged disc, or spinning wheel. 4,000 BC, Marduk is king and god of Babylon, riding the celestial horse in an ascension dream. 3,500 BC, the great Egyptian empire, worships their creator, Helios, the sun god who travels on the sun chariot with the horse Pegasus. The great phoenix falcon bird represents the solar horse. The round halo tops the phoenix. The Ankh cross and many later saints symbolizing enlightened travel through heaven's membranes. The fastest, biggest, and softest birds would symbolize the Holy Spirit horse throughout history, the falcon, eagle, and dove, divine superlatives. 3000 BC, Horus, from the sun god Osiris, ascends to heaven on the celestial horse. 2800 BC, in Africa, centaur fishman Nomo is the Dagon god, world mentor, riding his celestial horse. 2500 BC, Rama, a Vishnu avatar, hero of Ramayana, rides God's steed. Chonma is now the heavenly horse in Korea. Nearby Siberia, called the flying horse, Sholima. 2500 to 2000 BC, by now, Northern Europe was more temperate and North mythology began. Odin traveled the heavens with his angelic horse, Schleppner, paddling through the air's massive ether with his eight hooves, seen in art often with his tridents. This seafaring nation of explorers would venture as far west as the Americas years later, some 14,000 years after the first Americans. This may have been humanity's first circumnavigation. Vikings were escorted to Valhalla by Valkyries on Pegasus. Many Norse, Amerindian, and Oriental people follow more than one religion. Why not? Norse coffins are often emblazoned with the hammer of Thor and the cross of Christ. It's all good. Odin was the first Santa Claus, predating Christianity and St. Nicholas. The spirit was also in his son, his son Thor. 2000 BC, Poseidon, the great Greek god, travels with his horse of the gods, Pegasus. The divine horse is labeled Cyclopomp in Greco-Latin mythology, the conductor for souls of, of the dead. 1900 BC, Krishna, Vishnu's avatar, travels on the sun god chariot. Long Te was the heavenly winged horse dragon of the Tang dynasty. China's unicorn is still known as Qilin, while nearby Japan has the Kirin. Tibetan prayer flags are called Long Te, the wind or spiritual flying horse. 1500 BC, Aphrodite Venus. The great goddess travels on Pegasus in a dream. Meanwhile, in Egypt, Hermes Trismegistus was the first to be called Messiah or Light of the World. He was shown the Kabbalah on Mount Sinai by God, a similar story of Hebrew lawgiver Moses. Were they the same person? 
the great Egyptian empire recorded the Book of the Dead as scripture, describing how to ascend to heaven. Hieroglyphics represented sounds. Many centaurs with bird heads existed to represent enlightened flight. The spiritual golden age promoted a light heart and procreation. 1000 BC, Iliar Mumarets, Svantovit, were Slavic bogatirs. Like all bogatirs, they traveled on Pegasus, still seen today in the temple at Arcana. The great Shinto god, Dato Kwanan, from Japan was shown in art with the spiritual horse. Epona, the great Celtic goddess, was depicted with her flying steed. The legend of St. Nicholas of Myrna, Turkey, starts about this time, riding on his flying horse. 970 to 931 BC, King Solomon, the third Hebrew king, had the ascension dream and built a temple to the Lord that housed the Ark of the Covenant. Huge, ominous cherubim protected it. Roby Grotto overlooks the 160-foot-high natural rainbow bridge, which spans the Ardesh. Was this why ancient man chose this location for the first temple? Chauvi has now arched all of human history. 800 BC, Bellerophon was the last Greek to travel on Pegasus in a dream. Empress Jingo of Japan rides the magical flying horse. 600 BC, Buddha, another Vishnu avatar, and founder of Buddhism travels in a dream on the celestial horse. 500 BC, Elijah ascends on the chariot of Israel, another daylight vision of the horse of fire. 332 BC, enlightened, Alexander the Great conquers the world with Bucephaly, the horse of the universal monarch. About this time, the Uffington horse is carved into a limestone hillside in Great Britain, with a bird head to symbolize flight. Druids knew the Holy Spirit also. 28 AD, Jesus the Christian Lord ascends, like other prophets before him, on a horse, just as Sarastra predicted. He returns on God's steed for Judgment Day. 621 AD, the prophet Muhammad founder of Islam, ascends to heaven riding the horse of God, Barak, Allah. About this time, Celtic fairies are also seen riding flying horses. They called these flying horses the Holy Spirit. 750 AD, the wizard Padman Tadhava, founder of Tibetan Lamaism, travels in a dream on the flying horse named Jamlimnikor, the horse that can go around the world in one day. 1200 AD, Genghis Khan was named Himujin, and his heart is converted by a little green angelic unicorn who assumes the face of his father and saved Hindu India. The barbarian bans torture and spreads culture and religion, uniting Asia, Persia, India, and China in Mongolian peace. 1520 AD, the mysterious prophet Nostradamus travels in a Muhammad-like dream on the flitting horse of the celestial royal elder. I'm quoting from his quatrains. 1820, Louis Joseph Papineau was a pacifist, figurehead of the French-Canadian civilization and witnesses the horse of God, who stars today in Papineauville's coat of arms. 1900 A.D., the medicine man Black Elk visits heaven in a dream at age nine, reports seeing the whole herd, a rainbow, and even met the Ancients of Days. This ascension dream revitalized American Indian religion, as recorded in the book Sacred Pipe, 1934. 1911, Mobile Oil assumes Pegasus as its logo, a symbol of speed and power. Oil is an ancient gift of sunlight. 
1945, World War II ends, and the thankful Italians gift life-size bronzes of the winged horse to people of the United States, showcased on Memorial Bridge in Washington, D.C. Notice the domination over the symbolic snake. 1953, July 26, the Korean War ends, the Brees twins are born. Atheistic North Korea celebrates this peace and prosperity by erecting a huge towering statue of the divine horse with a man and a woman rider who overlook Pyongyang, named Shalima after a Siberian legend. Coincidence? 1981, enlightened Gerald Doust, discoverer of Shobi's angel, ascends to heaven on the horse and henceforth launches a noble, Kyoti-like quest to share divine knowledge. 1990, Daryl meets Don, the TriStar movie Pegasus model in Mojave, California. In 2007, Don is offered to Daryl. 1994, January 3rd, my Arabian stallion Druzon, my best friend, dies and immediately transfigures in the broad daylight of my living room. A vision reported to the Vatican, a wonderful gift. Still 1994, and on December 18th, Chauvy gets rediscovered. Coincidence? 2007, Taylor, my daughter, has the ascension dream, riding her winged horse, Dolly, who died the previous year in 2006. 2009, God's steed editor, Cecilia, my Venus, ascends to heaven in a dream, seeing the whole herd, wheels, and the tree of life. Can you see her enlightenment? There are hundreds of documented ascensions recorded in holy books and traditional lore. The metaphysical world is the enduring, unchanging one. Chauvy's historic art gallery is our first revelation, now unveiled for you. Our spirits share this ancient common ground. With this greater knowledge, we should have more understanding and tolerance for each other. Will Chauvy be the path to peace? Let me propose a peace accord. We the people of all faiths, in the spirit of our Creator's truth and goodness, confirm here that we will work together for permanent and lasting peace. Peace. Amen.